So bringing a broad awareness, just aware of that sitting posture. Trying to get a, a felt sense for the body sitting. Aware of your bottom and the surface underneath that pressure. And aware of that space around in the immediate area around your body. Relaxing any tension, any holding, just allowing the body to be. We'll bring our awareness now to the breathing. Just placing awareness on the in-breath and the out-breath giving our attention, offering our interest to the feeling of the breath. Aware of the feelings of the in-breath, nose, chest, abdomen, foot. Aware of the feelings of the out-breath. Abdomen, chest, nose, toe. Mindfully aware of the in-breath and trying to be aware of the entire in-breath and mindfully aware of the out-breath and with the out-breath putting things down. Aware of the in-breath, put. Aware of the out-breath, do. And so while still being aware of the breathing, still meditating, just trying to be informed by what I'm saying, do a little bit of contemplation. So for those of you who've had a close family member pass away, just bringing that to mind, without recollecting any of the particular details and trying not to fall into a lot of emotion, we're just kind of acknowledging. And we can use the word maranang, which means death and dying in Pali. 
I use that word with the breath, breathing in maranang, breathing out maranang. And we just acknowledge that this person we were closely related to, the day came when it was time for their body to die. And we just hold on to that perception, being aware, being informed by the truth of impermanence, breathing in maranang, breathing out maranang. And then just coming back to the breathing, where of the in-breath, where of the out-breath. And then we bring to mind a friend, a friend or a distant relative who also died. Just bringing to mind and getting a clear perception of that person that we knew. And then recollecting that the day came, something occurred, breath ceased, the body died. Maranang, Maranang. Just acknowledging this truth of death. And then coming back to your breath. Perhaps you have a teacher you may know of a teacher, one of your teachers from the past, who passed away. Just bringing to mind the perception, the memory, recollecting that person, their life. And then simply acknowledging the day came, where that body died and that person wasn't living here with us anymore. Maranang. Maranang. And then we just recollect that once having been born into this world, we don't know, this is a kind of a humble acknowledgement, we don't know the exact time of our death, we don't know when that will come. So just kind of making the mind receptive to this truth. You might even ask yourself a question, when will I die? Sincerely ask, when will I die? And then you get that answer, don't know. So in, in my family, one of my sisters had a miscarriage once. Another sister had a baby who was born prematurely and he only lived for six months. And we hear stories of cot death, babies dying in their sleep. see things on the news that sometimes a teenager dies, 
Sometimes a young adult dies. And then we can ask ourselves a question, is it possible that I might die young? We ask this question sincerely, is this a possibility for me? Maranang on the in-breath, Maranang on the out-breath. Mindfully aware of impermanence, mindfully aware of the possibility of death. And then just trying to be with the breathing, aware of the truth of impermanence, and aware of the breath. Mindfully aware of the in-breath, and mindfully aware of the out-breath. I think every day somewhere somebody dies in a car. And many of these people when they wake up have no idea that that was the day that they would have to leave their family and friends and this body. And one statistic I read once and I was a little surprised to discover was that uh, more people in Australia die in their bathrooms than in cars. It's an interesting phenomena that people feel very comfortable in their home. They feel very safe. And, uh, but if you're not mindful and you're on those uh, ceramic tiles and it's slippery and you're in a hurry, what can occur is that people fall and then they hit their head or they break their neck on a, on a strange angle. So this happens a lot. So we do this kind of contemplation not to become frightened, not to become depressed, but just to once again humbly acknowledge that uh, the possibility of death is there. And if we do this contemplation correctly, we tend to be more careful in our life. The possibility of accidental death is less because the mindfulness is better. And just being aware of one in-breath, one out-breath, with this awareness that death could come at any time, even today. For any one of us, there's no guarantee. So 
So when we're training with awareness of breath, we're trying to find a refuge inside, which is a very good thing to do, because the refuge on the inside is actually more dependable than a refuge on the outside. So this sense of knowing, this sense of calm, this awareness, whenever you feel centered, if you feel some deep sense of clarity and stillness, okay, that's a refuge. And when you meditate, you want to try to find that space, that quiet, peaceful sanctuary in your own mind as often as possible. And then hopefully, when the time comes and we do have to die, this body must go, consciousness must leave, hopefully we can find that refuge at that moment. That rather than panic and grab for something outside that can't help, that we turn inward and very sincerely into this quality of knowing, mindfulness and wisdom. So just now while we're being mindful of the breath, we kind of sincerely try to be with that breath, be interested in that breath, intimately knowing the in-breath and the out-breath, training this awareness, relaxing into awareness in the present moment. And just meditate on the breath for 10 more minutes. Just placing awareness on the in-breath and the out-breath. Giving our attention, offering our interest to the feeling of the breath. in-breath put, or the out-breath do.
with the in-breath put or with the out-breath go.
just a couple of minutes to go. And it's good towards the end of a meditation session just to recollect with some confidence that what you're doing is skillful and wholesome, that you're making good karma that will affect you positively and have benefits in the future and affect those around you positively. Recollecting that merit, you can dedicate it to other people if you like. Think of someone you'd like to dedicate merit to. And you can appreciate your own effort. Sometimes we have to sit with painful feelings, to sit with sleepiness, sit with cold, sit with irritating noises. So it takes effort. Everyone's been making these skillful efforts, practicing patience. So you can appreciate that, pat yourself on the back. Rejoice, rejoice, have mudita in Pali or Anamodana, you can recollect your good efforts and you rejoice in those good efforts and share the merit as well. <laughs>